breaking news out of New York City this morning. There was smoke everywhere, and then there was people lying on the platform. So it's, it's just been a hectic, hectic morning. At least 13 people hurt during a shooting at a subway station. The latest details about what happened. A Colorado congressman introduces federal legislation to address and help after mass shootings. There are common sense steps that we can take today that we believe could save lives. Plus, it's going to be pretty ugly. Inflation in the metro and across the country is close to double digits now. Prices for things like food and energy are outpacing wages, leaving Americans with less money. We expect March CPA, CPI headline inflation to be extraordinarily elevated due to Putin's price hike. And the latest federal actions to lessen the pain at the gas pump. We want to start by updating you on that breaking news out of New York, where multiple people have been shot at a subway station in Brooklyn, and the search is on there for the suspect. NYPD says this is not being investigated as terrorism. You're looking live from the helicopter there in New York City, but let's show you this map to show you where this shooting happened. The New York Fire Department says at least 16 people were hurt, including at least 10 people who were shot. Police say their injuries are not life-threatening. Here's what else we know so far. Firefighters found several undetonated devices, but NYPD says there are no active explosive devices. Authorities have not said where those devices were. Rena Roy is in New York with more. The NYPD desperately searching for a gunman wanted for shooting multiple people. They say he may have been wearing a gas mask and an orange construction vest. The massive crime scene spanning two subway stations in two different neighborhoods in Brooklyn. Right now, it's not clear whether the shootings took place on the trains or on the subway platforms. 36th Street and 4th Avenue. For multiple people shot. Police are also investigating whether a smoke device was detonated just before the gunman opened fire. They all you hear was a big loud noise, it sounded like like an explosion, and then there was just people running out of the train stations. More than a dozen people were hurt. This all unfolding just before 8.30 a.m. in the thick of morning rush hour. NYPD counterterrorism units and police dogs on the scene. We do know that President Biden, the DHS, and the U.S. Attorney General have all been briefed on this situation. The FBI is also helping the NYPD with this investigation. Schools in the area are sheltering in place for now out of an abundance of caution. Rena Roy, ABC News, Brooklyn, New York. Denver police say they're aware of what happened in New York. They tell us there will be extra officers and extra patrols around Denver's transit stations today. We've also reached out to RTD to see if they're increasing patrols. Colorado Congressman Joe Neguse is taking steps to try to prevent mass shootings and help people recover from them. It comes just weeks after we marked one year since the Boulder King Super shooting. Neguse was in Boulder this morning where he introduced four federal bills. And Denver 7's Veronica Acosta is now here in the studio to break them down. Veronica, tell us what you know. So this time around, Congressman Negus isn't focusing so much on guns with these bills, instead helping those impacted when there's something like a mass shooting. The legislation that we are announcing today is born from the deep anguish that we feel at each of these tragedies and the deep desire that we have uh, to ensure that these tragedies don't happen again. Bills aim to do just that. The Safe Workers Act would expand worker safety. It would direct the National Institute of Occupational Safety and Health to go ahead and run a study on threats of violence in the workplace. That study would then be used to create best practices to protect employees. The second bill, the Stop Violence Act, that would provide federal money to put in place security measures at places of concern. The Help for Healing Communities Act, that would help with recovery after a traumatic event. And then finally, the Prioritizing Resources for Victims of Firearm Violence Act, that would prioritize assistance to victims of gun violence as well as their families. The Boulder County District Attorney was one of the many standing alongside Congressman Neguse this morning as well. Listen to why he says this is so important. For those that are directly impacted by gun violence, I want to recognize that there is such an impact, particularly for those who have to return to the workplace in which it happened. They have to go back to the place where their friends and work family members were killed. They need help and they need support, and that's what this bill is designed to do. 
But despite focusing heavily on worker safety and help for gun violence victims, Congressman Nagus did make one thing clear. He's going to continue to push for that common sense gun violence prevention. He said the new bills were filed this morning back in Washington. And we will update you on their progress as they move through the federal legislation process. Veronica Acosta, thank you so much this morning. Now, happening today at the state capitol, lawmakers will discuss a bill addressing the state's fentanyl crisis. The legislation calls for tougher penalties for people caught dealing the drug where someone died. It also provides more money for treatment and drug testing. One sticking point is allowing possession of less than four grams to remain a misdemeanor. Now, the DEA says that amount of fentanyl could kill 2,000 people. Police and some Republicans want it to be a felony, something some Democrats say wouldn't reduce overdoses. We spoke to a recovering addict who says there needs to be accountability for people accused of dealing the drug not just a regular little like drug charge you know it's pretty much murder in their pocket i don't know why we haven't been proactive on this before um, why does it have to take so many um, deaths for us to get to that point the bill would also force drug users caught with the drug into education and treatment and provide millions of dollars for harm reduction tools for things like fentanyl testing strips well, U.S. inflation is soaring now to its fastest pace in more than 40 years. Costs of food and energy were the driving forces behind record price hikes. Now, prices have jumped eight and a half percent over the past 12 months. That's the biggest year over year increase since December 1981. In the Denver Metro, prices rose even more than that at more than nine percent. Across the country, wage growth went up six percent. That means inflation is rising faster than what people are earning. Many economists warn we could see a recession by the end of next year due to the rising cost of goods and the Federal Reserve raising key interest rates in the coming months. It's in this kind of environment, high inflation, high interest rates, when things kind of go off the rails and recessions can occur. So people are already pretty nervous, but if they lose faith and run for the bunker and stop spending, stop hiring, stop doing what they typically do, that would be a recession. First government report to fully capture the surge in gas prices following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in late February. Many experts are predicting the inflation rate will peak by summer. Now there is some good news. Gas prices have dropped eight cents in the past week after the U.S. tapped into emergency oil reserves. Prices across the U.S. still average 4.10 a gallon, which is 40 percent higher than a year ago. Now, Colorado's prices are th at 3.94. That's down three cents from last week. But we might get more relief at the gas pump because President Joe Biden is set to broaden the sale of 15 percent ethanol gas. The EPA usually prohibits the sale of E15 gasoline from June to mid-September. A waiver could make it available year round. Now, the move could lower prices by as much as 10 cents, but only about 2 percent of gas stations actually sell that type of gas. Ukrainian officials are accusing Russia's military of using chemical weapons while shelling Ukrainian cities. The Pentagon is taking the threat seriously, but have yet to confirm the claims of chemical warfare. As MWIN reports, British officials say fighting will intensify in the next two to three weeks. The besieged city of Mariupol continues to come under attack from Russian forces. Ukrainian officials are investigating claims that Russia used chemical weapons there against their troops after a social media report from a far-right Ukrainian paramilitary group. The U.S. and U.K. say they have yet to confirm the allegations, but Western allies are still sending a stark warning to Vladimir Putin. There are some things that are beyond the pale, and the use of chemical weapons will get a response, and all options are on the table for what that response could be. Ukraine's deputy defense minister says it appears Russia may have used phosphorus munitions, which is a chemical experts say has legitimate military purposes but can be used in inhumane ways. In the past, when the Russians have used use chemical weapons, say in Syria or Chechnya, uh, they've been able to control the narrative. They've been able to go in, clean up the scene, so the world's never really known. If they use chemical weapons in Ukraine, the world will know about it. Russia denies using any chemical weapons. Instead, Putin is calling the invasion noble, a way to protect his country under threat from what he says were neo-Nazis in Ukraine. They were choosing a time to attack. 
Later, developments demonstrated how deeply it was embedded. This comes as Ukrainian forces brace for a renewed assault in the east, where officials say Russian troops are regrouping. British officials say they believe fighting will intensify in the next couple of weeks, as Ukrainian President Zelensky is again appealing to the West for more weapons. Austria's chancellor, who just met with Putin, described their meeting as not friendly, direct and tough. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Still to come, a martial arts instructor is taking his teachings online. Coming up next, he's making sure kids of all abilities can practice their skills. Plus, the Nuggets head west for the first round of the playoffs, and the team says they're ready for Golden State.